the crappie spawns over the fish you know leave the shallow places where they've been spawning shallow cover and whatnot and uh, make their way out to the main lake in the summer I, I start looking for points coming out of these bays like out here and i'm not up on the bank looking for them as much as i am off the bank and looking for a nice piece of cover for them to hold in a great place to look for them is just those first deep pieces of brush coming out of where you think they were spawning fish there's one right there pretty good one too nice crappie that's a big one. That's what you're looking for. Nice crappie. So if you look right there, you can see my marker buoy. I idled around here, found the brush pile through the marker buoy off to the side of it. And then a lot of times I'll get on the troll motor, ease back up there, make sure I see the brush pile for sure on my electronics in the front. You know, that, I mean, there's a lot of variances when you throw a buoy, it might take it five, eight seconds to get to the bottom. Well, it might drift 10 yards, you know, 10 feet, depending on how much wind you got. So I like to get right back up on it, on the bow mount with my trolling motor. And then when I mark that brush pile, then I get my reference to the buoy. Okay, I know it's, you know, 10 feet up to the right, maybe a little out. And then once I get that perfect lineup, then I can either stay back and cast over that spot or I can get right on top of them if the water's deep enough and just vertical drig down on them. You know, this is 20 foot of water. They're not too skittish. If you get on top of them, you can catch four or five probably out of a one pile like this sitting on top of them. And then when they quit biting that, when you're sitting on top of them like that, a lot of times I'll just back off a little bit and cast to them and you can still catch some big ones doing that. I'm using the new high chirp from Lowrance. So it gives me real good, you can see individual crappie down there. And, these fish are actually off to the side of the pile. The other thing is the crappie don't sit still. They'll move around. I just use the buoy kind of as a reference to stay on the fish and I'll watch for them on my electronics. So yeah, the, the big key for me on this is, is the electronics, obviously. I mean, I run two Gen 3 units. I've got a nine in the front and a 12 in the back. And those are pretty pricey units. You don't have to use, you know, the most expensive units on the market to go crappie fishing, obviously. Side imaging really makes the process easier because you want to be able to get out here and spend a good part of a day just idling around looking for brush piles and marking them. Because not every pile you find is going to be loaded with crappie. So you've got to find a lot of brush piles and then find the ones that have fish in them you know, side imaging cuts down that process so long, but a lot of these technologies, side imaging, down imaging, they're built into some of the, you know, the more affordable units, the, the Elite Series from Lowrance, you know, for instance, or the Helix line from Hummingbird. So once I find them with side imaging, then I'll get on top of them. And I mean, down imaging's really changed the way I fish these brush piles because you can literally look at a pile and say, okay, I see 10 crappie in that pile there you know, and stop and know, you know, you're not gonna catch all 10 of them, but you knowing that there's 10 there for sure, you know you're not wasting your time. You might catch two or three and then it's on to the next pile. You get a school going, they bite on a certain color, certain shape, and then the bite, it seems like, you know, the, the fish quit biting. You can, you know, usually I'll just take that color off, try another color, and usually you can get a few more bites doing that. Sometimes you, you stumble onto a color that was better than the one you started with. You got two bites on a color, you think you've got it figured out, and then you put a different color on, you get 10 bites, you know? So I'm all the time changing colors. I mean, I just, I kind of looked at the water quality today. It's clear, but not real clear. So I went with a natural, but it also has some chartreuse in it. You know, I might reach down in the box and grab something that looks more like a shad or pick up one with some orange on it. Got it. Hey, I snagged one, what do you know? <laughs> Another good one, if it's a crappie. It's pulling really hard. Oh yeah, nice crappie. I'm gonna pull drag, yeah, I like when a crappie pulls drag. Oh, nice fish. Oh, look at that crappie. I hoisted it in there by hand instead of reaching down and getting them, broke my line, but <laughs> those are a little bit too big to swing like that. <laughs> really need to net those fish. All right, that's a nice white crappie right there. If you don't know the difference between a white crappie and a black crappie, a white crappie will have those, those vertical bars going up and down on its side where a black crappie will be just be more of just random spots everywhere on its side. So that's a really healthy white crappie right there. So I, I try to keep crappie fish and tackle pretty simple. I usually use four pound line. I use high vis. 
because I get a whole bunch of bites that I see before I actually feel. But I mean, usually I'm going to use a light action rod. This is like a six foot Wally Marshall Lose light action rod. I also use a seven foot light action rod. Um, and I'll use it for casting, vertical fishing, shooting docks. I mean, it's a great multi-purpose rod. That's what I mean by keeping it simple. That's like a $20 Fluger reel, like a 1000 series. So, I mean, it's nothing fancy. I, I carry a selection of jig heads from, I don't know, 1 64th all the way up to 1 8th. And that's just, you know, depending on the wind, how deep you're fishing, how slow you want the bait to fall, that kind of stuff, you can change your jig size. And then a wide variety of plastics in all different shapes, all different colors. You know, that's part of the fun of crappie fishing, in my opinion, is going in the store and saying, oh man, I don't have that color. That looks awesome. I bet they'll bite that. You know, <laughs> that makes fishing just as fun to me as trying to come up with a new color you can get them to bite on. So, but you don't, I mean, you can do it with a pocket full of jig heads and plastic bodies, four pound line. You can get a, like a pound spool of this stuff for like six bucks and um, $20 reel and $50 rod and you're good to go. <laughs>